When it comes to c -sharp, we have a lot of different operators we can use in order to do things inside our code. So what I thought I'd do in this episode is just kind of go over different operators we have and explain what exactly we can do using operators. So as you can see inside my project here, I have a bunch of different commas and I have a bunch of different code. And I'm just going to go ahead and take these one by one and sort of explain what the different operators do. Now the first one I want to talk about is something called arithmetic operators. And oh, by God, this is getting repetitive because in my PHP course, in my JavaScript course, you know, I've explained operators so many times by now. I know there's a lot of people who already know what operators are, but I think it's a good idea to explain it again since this is a new course and there's going to be new people who's never done it before. So operators is something we need to explain in this course here. Now, arithmetic operators, arithmetic, that is a difficult word to say, is simply adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, that sort of thing. Just basic operations we can do inside our code. So if I want to, in this case here, where I have uh, two variables, I have an integer, which is called a, that is equal to six, and I have an integer that's b equal to two. And if I want to do something with these two numbers, I can simply use arith arith arithmetic operators in order to perform certain you know, basic calculations. So if I want to add them together, I can just go ahead and write them out in the console by saying a plus b. The plus symbol here is going to be the operator that I'm talking about. We can also minus, we can subtract, we can multiply. Subtract and minus is the same, I just realized. Uh, we can divide, and then we have something called percentage here. Well, it's not called percentage, but it is an operator that uses the percentage symbol. And what this one does is that it divides the numbers together, and then it gives you how many is left over after you divide. So if it were to divide, let's say two by uh, five by two, then we can divide twice, but then there's going to be one left over when we have, you know, five. So it's going to give you uh, one as the final value, if that makes sense. We also have something called incrementers and decrementers. And this is basically when we take a number, write plus plus either in front of it or behind it. In this case here, I wrote it behind. And what this does is that it adds one to it to whatever number we might have here. So if I were to run this console dot write line a plus plus, what do you think is going to tell me inside the console? You might be thinking it's going to take a, which is six, and add one to it, and then write it inside the console. But in this case, it's actually going to just write six because the plus plus is coming after the a, meaning that it's going to just write it out into the console, and then it's going to increase it by one. So it has actually increased it by one, but we don't actually see it until after the console. Now, if I were to put the plus symbols in front of A, so instead of writing A plus plus, I can go ahead and write plus plus A, then it will actually increase A by one and then output it inside the console. And we can do the exact same thing when it comes to minus, so we can decrease it by one. So B minus minus is just going to output B into the console and then it's gonna subtract one or we could put it in front of B and then it's going to minus it by one and then output it inside the console. This is actually something we use surprisingly a lot inside programming. So you need to remember increment and decrementers here. The next type of operator we're gonna talk about is the comparison operator. And the comparison operators we also use quite often inside our code because we use it in order to compare two pieces of data to check whether they're the same, if one is bigger than the other one, uh, if they're not the same. There's a lot of different things we can do to compare them. And then depending on the outcome of this, we want our code to do a certain thing. So comparison operators is something we use quite often. Now remember, when we want to take, for example, a and set it equal to a number like six, then we just write it like we did up here. And this is actually what we call an assignment operator, which I'll get to at the bottom here. But when we want to compare by checking if they're equal to each other, then we add another equal sign. So we say equal, equal, in order to check whether they are the same. And the outcome here is going to be a Boolean statement, which means that we're gonna get a true or a false statement. So in this case here, A is not going to be equal to B. So with this first line here, we would get a false statement. Then the same thing down here, we're not checking if they're equal, but we're checking if they're not equal by taking the first equal sign and exchanging it for a exclamation mark. So in this case, it would just simply say if they're not equal. And it's not like this, which some people think it might be. It is not exclamation equal equal. It is just replacing one of the equal signs with an exclamation mark. 
Then we can also check if one letter or one uh, number is greater than, if it's greater than or equal to, if it's smaller than or smaller than and equal to. So it's pretty simple uh, based off the rest of these. And then we have something called assignment operators. An assignment operator is something that is not crucial to know, but is good to know since it will shorten your code. Well, the first one is really important to know because the first one here is what allows for us to set a number or a variable equal to a number or another variable or whatever. So the first one there you will be using quite often. You would actually be using it all the time inside your code. The rest of these I want to explain very briefly because you can see I have a plus equal to B, which is, we could actually just say A plus equal to A. Uh, what this one does is it means the exact same thing as if it were to do this right here. Let me just go ahead and increase some distance here so we can take these apart. A plus equal to A is the same as saying A is equal to A plus A. Exact same thing. It is just a shorter way to write this below here. So if you're dealing with numbers, then doing it in the first way, which is using the assignment operator, it can be a lot shorter to write out your code than having to write this line right here. And it just looks more professional to do it the first way. The last one we have down here is one called logical operators. And this one we use quite often as well. In some cases, when we want to use these comparison operators we had up here, where we could check if they were equal to each other, are they not equal to each other, is one greater than the other, is one not greater than the other, or equal to, or whatever, then we can, using logical operators, do multiple comparisons at the same time. So let's say I have a piece of code, and I want to check whether or not two numbers are uh, not the same, so I can check if A is not equal to B, but I also need to make sure that B does equal two. Then I have two types of comparisons I need to do, and I would like for both of these to be true in order for the next piece of code to actually run. So what I can do here is I can use a logical operator, which is the two um, ambassands, we call them, that are in the middle there. So I can use two ambassands to say and, and that is what they really say. So if this is true, and if this is true, then run the next code. So that is basically what that does. We do also have one where it is or instead of and, and we use these pipe symbols for that instead of the ampersand. So in this below example here, I could say is A not equal to B or is B equal to two. So just one of these statements here has to be true in order for this entire statement to come out true. So if you were to take these one at a time, you can actually see that B is equal to two, A is equal to six. So in this case here, A is not equal to B, that is true, and B is equal to two, which means that this entire statement is true, and then whatever is going to come after might get run if that's what we tell it to do. Whereas the next line down here, we do the exact same thing, but B is not equal to two, it's equal to 10 inside the comparison. So this line here is gonna come out false because with the ambersands, I'm telling it that both statements has to be true. The next one down here, it will come out as true because B is equal to uh, two and A is not equal to B. So both of these are actually true, but we just need one of them to be true. So it will also come out true. Um, the last one down here is a different type of operator because this one basically says, is this statement not true? So if I were to say, well, B, is that one equal to 10? Then in this case, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and check B up here, it's right now two. So this statement here is going to be false. But what I'm doing here is I'm checking if it's not true by using the exclamation, exclamation mark right in front of what I'm trying to check here. Do you notice that I put my check inside parentheses in order to group them together? You can do that at any point inside of your code. So if I want to group these together, I could also just go ahead and do like this if I were to go above here this would actually be the same as this right here. So I can group my uh, different comparisons together in sub parentheses. So this is the exact same thing if I wanted to do that. So those are logical operators. And again, all these types of operators, you just need to know because we will be using them quite often inside our code. So it's nice to know what exactly we're going to be dealing with in the future. And that's basically all I want to share in this episode. I think this was a quite short episode. I'm not sure how long I've been recording, but this is something you need to know. And this is something you will be using quite often in the near future. So I think we're going to do a project pretty soon, just a very short one in order for you to get an idea about what exactly we can do 
using what you already know from inside the previous lessons. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next episode.